Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Jeremy Siskin. I look just like a floating head right now, but I promise I am more, so much more. Anyway, I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano um, and the Jazz Piano Fundamental Series. It's all available at jeremysiskin.com. By the way, haven't said this in a while. If you order from me, you get both the hard copy and the PDF. Um, whereas if you order from Amazon, you have to choose one or the other. So uh, if you're in the US, I always love it when people order from me. But enough about me, time to talk about you. And what I wanna talk about today is how to start thinking about creating an arrangement. Um, this could be a solo piano arrangement, it could be a trio arrangement, and I think these same concepts could be you know, applied to creating a much larger arrangement. But um, we're mostly pianists here, so we're probably going to, to think mostly in terms of um, putting things on the piano. So, I thought that a tune that a lot of people know and love and would be fun to play around with um, is Someday My Prince Will Come. I imagine a lot of you are familiar with this. Let me just play kind of the standard version um, before we get into some concepts that might go well for an arrangement. So here we go. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, okay. So the first question is, how do you start? How do you, how do you like even brainstorm what kind of an arrangement you want? And my first suggestion is to get to know the tune. And so that can be the melody in the chords. Um, is it very diatonic? Is it chromatic? Is there kind of a particular sound within the tune that's interesting? I mean, here, one thing that I might latch onto is these dominant seventh sharp five chords. There's something kind of classical and regal about that. So maybe I'll think, oh, maybe I could do a really classical and regal kind of arrangement. Um, just one idea. You can also look at the title of the tune and the lyrics and any cultural associations, right? Um, so, you know, the first... <laughs> Uh, part of the title is Someday, so I might think about kind of longing and nostalgia with Someday. Um, but there's also hope there, right? Someday my prince will come. It's like, my, it's not my prince will never come. Um, and that's, you know, what the song is about. Of course, this has this cultural association with Disney and, you know, bright colors and kind of this happy pastoral scene. So you might think of making a kind of spring arrangement or you might think of a personal association maybe every time you hear this song it makes you think about how your prince never came <laughs> you know how you never found love and it's it's a really sad and ironic song for you or maybe you heard it when it was when you were a child and it makes you like feel nostalgic and you're remembering these times of innocence right so there's no right answer um in terms of like you can only play this tune this way i would say you know if you're playing a really really sad song with a really sad lyric, playing it really upbeat um, is probably a questionable decision. However, there's lots of examples of jazz musicians doing this successfully. A great example is the song Remember, which you know we mostly associate in the jazz world with Hank Mobley. If you listen to uh, Ella Fitzgerald's original kind of version of Remember, sorry, I shouldn't have said original. If you listen to her version, it's very true to the um, to the song, and it's, you know, the final lyric is, remember you said you'd care a lot, but you forgot to remember. It's a very sad, uh, heartbreaking song. And by the way, originally it's actually this waltz. Um, and it kind of has this music box kind of quality. And so Hank Mobley did exactly the opposite thing of what you would glean from that lyric. He made it super joyful. Um, and it was, a, it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, another example I think of is the Days of Wine and Roses. Um, you know, that was from this, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a, a movie, um, about really kind of some bad times and alcoholics and, and really difficult subject matters. And you listen to Oscar Peterson's version and most jazz versions is... <laughs> you know, it's really happy swinging. So... 
Uh, I like to use the kind of emotional content of the tune to inspire me, but you know, you don't always have to match that emotion. All right, so what are some next steps to think about in terms of creating an arrangement? I made a little list there. Um, okay, so the first thing is feel and tempo. Okay, so is it gonna be swing? Is it gonna be fast? Is it gonna be slow? Some other feels, you know, we could make someday our princess come, uh, someday my prince will come, we can make it into a bossa nova. Meter is, is the next thing, but meter is so related to feel. You know, is it gonna be this kind of jazz waltz? Is it gonna be an easy 4-4? Four, four? In a nice two feel? Is it gonna be like uh, just driving 4-4 four, four swing? You know, Miles recorded it, I think, a couple of different ways, but I think one of the ways was like more of a floaty 4-4. Four, four. Um, is it going to be floaty? Do you want to experiment with an interesting meter? Do you want to experiment with an odd meter? You know, tunes in three are very easy to put into five. One, two, three, four. But... to change meter, right? It'd be kind of cool actually to do that five for the first eight measures and then go into three for the next eight. Two, three, four. Lots of tunes change. Um, meter feel quite often or maybe you want to just like cut a little bit off of some of the phrases or extend some of the phrases right maybe you really want to hang on to that last chord before going back to the beginning <laughs> So you can extend some stuff, move some stuff around, but probably I'd get some sort of a general feel going first of all. How do you want the song to feel? What sort of emotion do you want it to inspire? Um, and how do you want people to relate to it? I'm gonna skip reharmonization for now because I feel like bass line also goes so deeply into feel. If you're choosing a swing style, a bossa nova style, a samba style, an Afro-Cuban style, you know, something kind of common, then you probably don't have to define a bass line. But bass line, you know, is a huge opportunity to put something interesting into the song. You know, I know I'm stealing this from something, I think a Ray Brown. a totally different feel or what about let's see what would be another interesting bass line How do you come up with a bass line? Well, the first one that I did, I stole. 
And doing a lot of listening is a really good way to come up with <laughs> good bass lines, right? Um, otherwise, I would just kind of sing. And the hard thing about a tune like this that changes every measure is that you either need to figure out a bass line that's going to kind of like fold in the different chords, or you need to come up with a bass line that changes every measure. Artists like Oscar Peterson, Ahmad Jamal, um, Ray Brown, Brad Meldow, Fred Hirsch. Uh, uh, you know, if you check out their trio records, you'll start learning about some of these common bass lines, some of these common bass um, techniques. Um, so then let's go to reharmonization. This is another way to create an original stamp on the tune. Miles, you know, put in a pedal on Someday American Soul Come, I believe. Um, and that's definitely one cool method of reharmonization. So I don't remember if he just did it for the intro or for the head too. Maybe you decide that you want to har harmonize each melody note. I'm not going to go into a whole explanation of how to reharmonize now. I've made lots of videos. It's in my Playing Solo Jazz Piano book. Um, but maybe you want to go. As creative as you want with that um, or maybe you want to make sure you always have a stepwise motion in the bass so you're going that wasn't the most brilliant thing I've ever played but you know you can totally experiment with that which leads us to hits right hits is where the whole rhythm section plays together so Hits could be with the melody. It could be one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, that wasn't with the melody. One, two, three, one, two, three. Right? Or the hits could be kind of in response to the melody. you're playing stop time, meaning that there's not normal bass and drums, and you're just playing hits. Or it could be that you're playing you know that your bit that your bass is also playing a bass line and then adding hits to that. So that works, you know, whether you're playing solo piano or whether you're playing with a trio. And I hope that I'm conveying that it's not a choice that you have to choose a single one of these for the arrangement. You could have a bass line and then at the end of a phrase have some hits or in a certain spot in the melody that's really interesting, have some hits. And you know the hits could be their own reharmonizations. In fact, that's pretty normal. It'd be weird to just have hits that are just the original chords. All right, intro and ending. You know, these are almost necessary. If you're gonna have an arrangement, you need to have some sort of an intro and an ending. Um, and I always try to tell people to use something from the tune. And it's not even that anybody needs to notice, but you just want to have that connection there. What might that look like? Well, so 
I like taking the first melodic interval. So maybe I'll use the perfect fourth in a couple different ways and have some hits in response. super memorable. Um, or if you've already kind of figured out your arrangement, you know, take an element to the arrangement. It could just be your first bass line if you're using this. want to vamp out on that ending same thing come up with something unique for the ending or you know have it be a three time tag but say that make that really clear in terms of the way that you're presenting it interludes you know uh and we all know that Ahmad Jamal passed recently and he was such a king of including interludes um one way to think about interludes is in the context of a big band arrangement, right? In big bands, we often have a solo send-off that after the tune's over, um, Jamal, um, I'm, I think it's his version of Cheek to Cheek. He does something kind of like that where they just go. <laughs> right, they just keep going up by half steps and it's a really cool interlude. Or you can think about the tune. Um, <laughs> has just eight bars of added pedal, sus chord, kind of clear your palette. So you could put that in the middle of some of my principal comp. Or you think about a tune like I Mean You. has a little hook after the end of the head. All these things help to make your arrangement, your treatment of the tune, memorable and fun to play. Finally, for now, um, voicing and orchestration. You know, what kind of voicings are you gonna use to present the melody? That can be part of the arrangement, right? When Oscar Peterson plays Have You Met Miss Jones, he plays a playing those same voicings, then it's going to sound like you're playing his arrangement. So are you going to play closed position voicings? Are you going to play drop two? Right, are you going to kind of do something interesting with those? Are you going to play with so what voicings? Um, a little harder to do. You'd have to, you know, probably include some reharmonization. Are you going to play with chordal voicings? Are you going to play with kind of shout chorus? Is that the vibe you want? Um, are you going to play the melody in double octaves? Are you going to put the melody at the bottom?
there's so many different things to come up with. Are you gonna play contrapuntally? <laughs> kind of what I mean by orchestration. You know, it can be really useful as you create this arrangement to think about, well, am I thinking like a big band? Am I thinking like an orchestra? Am I, you know, or think of a smaller ensemble, right? Here I'm thinking of two instruments, maybe, I don't know, a flute and a clarinet. And maybe you want to have the bass double that line. Um, you know, it's like Bud Powell's Hallucinations, he starts... Just starts with two instruments, right? One melody in the left hand, one in the left, and one in the right. So, hopefully you're feeling inspired rather than overwhelmed, but those are some ways to think about playing an orchestration. Uh, after my last video, I had some people comment, well, why don't you always play at the end? So I guess I'll play a little bit of something. My prince will come at the end. I'll let you see what I'm playing just in case there's something worth stealing. Um, and I'm going to try to come up with my own arrangement on the spot. We'll see what happens. All right. Um, if you've watched this far, comment with, um, you, you know the joke about what the princess said when uh, she'd had her, she'd brought her film into Kodak. She said, well, someday my prince will come. So uh, comment with someday my prints will come if you have made it this far.